My name is, uh, is Dubi Fingerstein. I'm the uh, uh, director of uh, additive manufacturing and 3D printing at Java Technologies. Uh, today I have with me uh, Tim Williams, uh, which is the uh, principal of Tim Williams Design and the founder of CurrentWorks 3D Creative. Uh, and we both are going to take you through the, uh, 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 this webinar, which is all about 3D printing uh, for architectural design. Um, and uh, we will try to uh, uh, show you how 3D printing can help uh, uh, architects and designers um, to uh, increase innovation uh, and help them uh, be more um, successful. A um, few words about Javelin Technologies. Uh, we are the uh, biggest 3D solution provider in Canada. Uh, we have six offices across the country. Our main office is in Oakville, Ontario. Uh, we have product sales, training, and technical support close to our customers. Uh, we provide software solutions um, and also uh, 3D printers by Stratasys. Our main software is SolidWorks for uh, engineers and designers. <clears throat> As the uh, 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 biggest 3D solution provider in Canada, we are trying to help our customers um, to be successful uh, through all the product life cycle. Um, um, and we, we start from uh, the people. So uh, when, when we're talking about 3D printing or even software training uh, and also printing ideas and concept models help people to communicate. Uh, and express their ideas and, and bring their ideas to life. Uh, as we go forward to the uh, technology, um, the design and development with 3D printing uh, become much more efficient uh, when you can basically check your design um, and, uh, and use the uh, 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 cutting edge technology that's available today um, to make your uh, prototypes and products. Uh, when we go to process, uh, processes, uh, prototyping and evaluation of the design uh, helps a lot to uh, um, reduce the reduce the uh, the errors and and also uh, increase the uh, the innovation and the communication. Um, um, that's uh, and that enable our customers to be much more efficient um, and to reduce time and cost when they um, going through the uh, R&D uh, phase. And once we have, or once our customers have um, the, the, the final uh, design, uh, we can help with the manufacturing as well. Um, our 3D printers um, can help with uh, uh, producing a, a small amount of uh, real end-use parts, also uh, jigs and fixtures for manufacturing floors. Um, so we do support our customers. This technology can support our customers basically through all the product life cycle, include even maintenance of the products uh, after we ship it out and spare parts later on. Today we're going to talk about uh, the 3D printing overview, um, live customer presentation by Tim Williams, customer story about Wrightwell Architects in New York, uh, and uh, uh, we will sum up with the uh, essential architect, architectural 3D printing course that uh, Javelin uh, just came up with. It's a new product by us. So users, uh, what our customers are using 3D printing for in the architectural um, um, section or the architectural industry? Um, anywhere from concept models. I have an idea. I want to print it in my hand. I want to test my concept. Mass models, uh, building scales, a, a penetration, uh, sales models. This is a very interesting application, um, and it gives you a great competitive advantage when you go to a meeting with a, with a nice detailed uh, um, model. Um, detailed interior e exploration, so you know the printer can print uh, uh, any shape that we have in mind and the details that we can go today are amazing. So uh, it's not only about the outside shape of the uh, model but also inside uh, interior uh, and, and we, will, we will see some models. Uh, of course we can print monuments um, and construction uh, details as well. Um, I want to discuss a little bit about the, uh, the 3D printing process, um, which is a very easy, a streamlined process. So basically, anyone that's using CAD software, it can be uh, uh, Rhino, AutoCAD, uh, 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 Revit, 
any kind of CAD software today can produce an SDL file. So once we have a design on our computer, we can just save the file as an SDL file. SDL file um, is basically the, um, we, we call it, um, that's a 3D printing language that we use uh, to communicate with our printers. With, by the way, it's all the printers out there. So if you think about it, it's like a PDF or like a Word document that we're using for 2D. For 2D um, and that's how we use for 3D printing. So we just save it as an STL file, which is basically a triangle uh, um, shape of, of, that, of, of the, of the uh, file that we want to print. And then once we have the STL file, we just load it to the printer, click print, and we get the model in our hand. Very easy, very uh, straightforward process. Um, the technologies um, that, we are, uh, that we are using um, that very much uh, complete each other um, is the PolyJet and the FDM. The, the PolyJet technology um, is basically an inkjet uh, uh, technology. Uh, we have inkjet print heads similar to 2D um, printing, but instead of ink, we are jetting photopolymer material. It's a liquid material that when we expose it to UV lights, it cured, um, and, and that's how we can uh, build a model layer on top uh, layer on top of, of, of layer. Um, we print very thin layers of 16 microns, um, and the uh, the dot size are very very small. Uh, it's in the picometers, so around 90 picometers, um, and that's help us to get very high resolution and and very smooth surface finish. Um, uh, also, this technology can mix materials together on the fly. So we have eight print heads. Each print head can print different material. Um, so we can mix different colors, we can do um, our rubber and rigid and also clear materials as well. Um, so you can get a file uh, or a part eventually that will have full color and also flexible materials or, or clear materials in, in the middle of the part without having the need to post-process it later on or paint it later on um, uh, or glue it. Um, so that's a great uh, uh, prototyping uh, uh, technology. Um, the second technology that we have is the FDM, which stands for Fused Deposition Modeling. Um, this technology um, is basically an ABS, uh, I would say thermoplastics uh, technology. So it's, it's thermoplastic uh, material that goes through an, um, uh, an extruder that, that melts it and paints it on the tray. Um, this technology, uh, uh, the model is going to be um, tough models. So it, it, it's great for functional testing, great for uh, um, you know, models that will need to hold maybe some, some, some pressure or, or models that we, want, we, we would like to ship out um, uh, um, uh, or, or models that, that can hold uh, more uh, weight. Um, uh, uh, that the FDM would be a great solution for that. Um, uh, so it's, I would say more durable parts. Uh, the surface finish is going to look a little bit rougher than the polyjet, but you know, there's, there's, there's lots of post-processing option uh, to smooth the surface finish as well. This is an example of the FDM uh, 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 models. Um, so as we can see it, um, we, can, we, we have the details, um, and, uh, and this model is made out of real ABS plastics, um, so it's going to be tougher. Um, and uh, uh, um, and, and for big structures like that, um, it can be even durable. Um, the polyjet, on, on the other hand, um, is a much more, I would say, uh, we can have much fine details, um, and the surface finish is going to look much uh, uh, smoother. Also, um, we can mix materials together in different colors. So what we can see here, uh, it's a model that we printed, uh, we call it with DM, which is digital materials. Um, and digital materials are basically a mix of different materials that we mix on the fly. Um, so, um, you know, you can do uh, a, the white material together with the uh, uh, a, a black material, mix it together, get different colors and get different uh, flexibility or show values. Um, also, both technologies, by the way, come with soluble support options. So, once we get the model out of the printer, we can just uh, um, soak it in a sodium hydroxide bath or even just water um, and dissolve the support so we can get the fine details um, that we need from the model. 
Um, I want to discuss about uh, three uh, examples of, of fine features um, that you can get from the printer. Uh, one of them is just an example of trees or you know any kind of small part that you need on your models. Could be cars, could be umbrellas. Uh, you can print fine features in the, on the printer. Uh, I put in the soluble support tank and get it ready uh, to use. You don't have to glue it. You don't have to post process it. And, and today you don't even have to paint it. You get it like full color right off the printer. Um, another example is the uh, a soldier's wall carving uh, from a Vimy caves. So what we can see is that the blue color emphasizes the fine details. Um, the last example is the Eiffel Tower. Um, it's maybe a little bit tough to see it from this picture, but the, um, um, the fine features that we have on this model are, are just amazing. Um, and that's one of the uh, uh, great advantages of the soluble support. Um, if we look on this model, and that's an interesting case study, um, 3D printing can uh, open different kind of varieties of uh, work, work for us. One is, of course, to print this model as an assembly file, which is one part, and the other option is to print it as a, a different part and assemble it later. Each one of the, uh, of the options have the advantages and disadvantages. So if we want to slice it to different kind of parts, we can just uh, have it on different uh, you know, different parts in our design, just print it in, in, in different parts uh, and then assemble it together. Um, or we can just print it as a one file. Uh, as we can see on the right here, these buildings were just printed as a one big file. Um, so 3D printing is the only technology that enables creation of an assembly as one part. Assemblies can include multi-materials and multi-colors. Uh, the advantage of, of printing is as assemb it assembled no need to assemble it or do any post-processing and enable printing assemble that are, are very hard or impossible to assemble later on, talking about fine, fine features or, or, or maybe cavities or stuff that you have inside of the model that's going to be tough to glue or to mount it on later on. Um, the advantage of printing it disassembled, it's going to be easier to clean the support. Uh, the post-processing might be easier as well uh, if you need to uh, um, uh, a, 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 to, to glue it or, or to send it. Um, support material saving, it's usually going to be much more cost effective to print like that. Uh, the strengths, you know, we can, we can uh, if we have special features on the part that we want them to be stronger, so we can have, uh, um, we can have different technologies to print this. For example, some of the parts can be FDM materials made out of ABS plastic and some of them can be polyjet made out of clear material. So uh, we, can, we can have different materials and parts can be replaced when the design is changed. Uh, I would like to hand it over now to Tim William to discuss about his experience with this technology. Thank you, Doobie. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, my name is Tim Williams. I've been a, uh, had my own graphic design firm for uh, almost 30 years. And it was almost uh, about four years ago that either by fate or foolish luck that I found myself uh, in, in the 3D printing world. Um, and uh, I, I, I own an Object 30 Pro, um, and the reason that I purchased the Object 30 Pro uh, was, was for a couple main reasons. One was the footprint of the machine, uh, the other was the, uh, uh, it was a quiet machine, but also some of the materials. Uh, I was very excited about the materials, uh, and one of them was clear. Um, that uh, I could use, and I, I really saw the advantage for presentation uh, in, in, in that. It was not because if I was thinking the, the architectural world, it was, it was actually a lot of other industries that uh, when I got into it that I was looking at. But probably one of the uh, market sectors that I have found that is embracing 3D printing uh, the most is, uh, is, is the architectural uh, world. Um, <clears throat> This technology allows for quick and timely cost-effective uh, explorations and presentations of uh, uh, proposed projects. And that's um, probably because the architectural profession uh, uses models more than just about anybody. Um, and uh, you know, right now what I found or, or what I found then is that 3D printing is where sort of three-dimensional drawing and uh, CAD was 20, 25 years ago. Uh, is where it's uh, is where three D printing is now. We're at the infant stage, but uh, it, uh, it it's amazing what's going on there. Three um, D printing it, it, it allows for the development of ideas that otherwise would be next to impossible to uh, 
to do with traditional model building techniques. You know, from complete overview, building overviews, uh, as some of the models that you've seen already, to, uh, to, to just some really uh, proposed detail aspects of ideas that uh, it, it before were hard to visualize or present. Um, it also, one of, the, one of the things that's been most important for us is, is, is the quick turnaround of, of models. Um, and that's probably what most of my clients um, find is the positive, is just how fast design modifications can be made and turned around. You know, often within 24 to 48 hours, um, just depending on the size of, and the complexity of the model and changes. Um, when you have a 3D model, what we found is that uh, it really makes approvals happen quicker. It leaves very little to the imagination. Uh, people get it. Um, and so it, 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 it's worked out uh, that way. It was where high resolution color proofers were 20, 25 years ago as well um, in the graphic design world that made approvals easier. Um, so once again, um, it's, uh, it, it's been effective in both commercial and residential architectural applications. I have produced a lot of give, uh, model presentations. Um, uh, to clients, just as gifts or as progress uh, studies um, done residential models as well as towers uh, for companies, and they give you know they want to give little trophies away, say to the engineering firm or the companies providing rebar or the developer. Um, the other big benefit that is uh, it, 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 that is probably one of the cooler things about it is that almost every three D drawing program. Uh, that's out there uh, as a default to save as an STL option, which is the language that uh, that our three D printers need to 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 print, and uh, everybody has that at their fingertips right now. So um, just to sum things up, um, before I, I show you a couple of projects that I've worked on and done, is uh, time and money savings, and time is probably more critical than a lot of them than the money savings part of it. Um, integration of existing technology that's uh, out there, and, and, and as well as integrating into traditional techniques. Um, you know, they, mixing traditional model building with 3D printing model building uh, works very well. You're able to push boundaries like you would not believe in concepts. Um, you know, it, it, it truly is a better mousetrap. Nothing beats holding a physical model and, and examining it. Um, so it's, uh, I believe that those who are using 3D printing as part of their uh, business these days are way ahead of the game. Um, if you want to make a, if you want to make an impression on it uh, with somebody, yeah, give your client a model to hold in your hand, uh, a nice little cool, cool model that, that, that's there. So, I'm now only going to share with you just a few, few projects that, uh, few projects that I've worked on, um, and uh, the first one is uh, the Lamborghini uh, dealership that uh, was built in, or opened up in Vancouver here a couple years ago. And uh, we went and worked with the developer, and this was a renovated building. Um, and we made this, uh, this full-scale model of it. Uh, the cars are to scale, um, and uh, it, it, this one was a, a one that was printed. The parts were all printed separately, um, with the exception of the cars. All the materials in here are existing um, material colors. So the black on the front, the white. There's some blue inside. Those are all uh, colors that my printer provides, and it just happened to match uh, uh, very nicely. The nice thing about this one is that the, the roof comes off, so you can look inside on the two floors. And, uh, and even then, once they had it, they were, made, made some adjustments to their building after they had their model here, um, mostly to the, uh, to the work bay area and to where some desks and what have you, some office spaces were going to be. Um, this one still sits in their boardroom um, as, as, as a piece of art, almost, uh, so it works very well. The next one is a staircase study that we did. Uh, this is made with, uh, with two different materials, uh, floating uh, clear stairs going up with this black uh, staircase or, uh, um, handle uh, with it. And uh, you know, for me, it's almost, uh, it's, it's almost a piece of art as well. And, uh, but uh, it answered lots of questions and it fitted nicely to, uh, to, to, uh, to the client's uh, uh, project. 
This is just another example. This is a very tiny little uh, two houses. This is, was a, an examination for a laneway house uh, that was done. Um, and the, uh, the client wanted to look at variations of buildings that could go in the back. And uh, so we put this together. The house, both houses actually pop out of the base uh, so they could be fit in with different, uh, different formats. These actually turned out to be some gifts that were given to the people that were in both houses. And, uh, and simply by getting the light coming out from the bottom, and we just adjusted the thickness of the walls or the, of, of the resin there, um, and that's why the windows all glow with it uh, in there. So it's very effective. These things light up beautifully. Um, this is an art building that's uh, just about to, about to break ground. Uh, this is, I believe, the fourth uh, iteration of this model that we did as uh, planning departments and, and clients and that wanted modifications and changes. They would get them. Less than 24 hours, I had a new model in their hand cleaned and ready to go, and uh, once again, as they went through this, um, you know, it, uh, it, 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 it really did help the, uh, the approval stage and, and getting things uh, uh, by with folks. So, so it's just to, uh, once again, summarize, you know, here's some additional pictures from context models, just to some other studies that were done for renovations or new builds. Uh, and it, um, it, it, it's been fantastic to, uh, to have a 3D printer to provide solutions uh, um, uh, for people and in every aspect uh, that we've done working with the architects, um, the models have just been, uh, been uh, fantastic. So thank you for your time to letting me uh, to sit in here and share, uh, share my uh, experience in 3D printing and I hope everybody has uh, as much success with it as we've, uh, we've certainly enjoyed. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Okay, uh, let's move forward. Uh, I would like to show you a quick video uh, from Wrightville Architects. Um, it's a customer in New York. Uh, this is this video was uh, um, basically uh, recorded a couple of years ago, but it's very relevant um, to uh, our industry today. I'm a senior associate at uh, Reform Architects, New York. Uh, the architecture is very modern, very progressive. We like to use uh, high tech to describe our architecture. The way the architectural workflow is, is that there are always multiple architects fighting for the same job. If there are multiple choices for a client to pick, you need to give them more reasons to pick you than the other guy. Having a 3D printer separates you from the rest. The fundamental reason why you have an object 3D printer is it shows we want the best for ourselves and we want the best for our clients. So we do think that uh, we can't put a number on it because you never know which price you would not have gotten because of it. But we do think that we uh, ended up with more projects than we would have otherwise. The way we did models before in our office was uh, all done by hand. And it was a, a very long and tedious process, uh, one or two months per, for a building model was uh, nothing special. Uh, because the timeline was so long and the, the investment was fairly big for a model, the models were always done very much towards the end of, uh, of the process, of the design process. And on top of that, at the end of uh, all the work we've done, we ended up with only one model. And uh, we definitely use the 3D printer to overcome that problem because there's nothing better than to have a model of concept design at, at early stages of the project, sitting one at the desk of the investor to have one sitting at the desk of the client, can put one at the desk of the, the mayor um, so yeah, that we can print uh, multiple copies of the same model is uh, very beneficial. We also make a lot of uh, iterations of the model, not only different designs, but uh, much more importantly on different scales. Because you first have to talk about how does the design influence its surroundings. So you want to look at the bigger scale of how the massing fits in the massing of the 
the city. The next scale up is how does the massing fit in the massing of the next door neighbors. And the next part is how is the plasticity or the massing of the building itself. And every time you go one scale bigger to zoom in more and more into the building, we even did a one-to-one -one scale model of land before it went into production. And it was cheaper to have it done on the 3D printer rather than having done an actual model. There is still uh, very much a wow factor when we come into a meeting with a model. Just uh, two weeks ago, uh, we were asked for to produce a completely redesigned plan because the program changed. We were able to be uh, at the meeting two weeks later with not only drawings, calculation, renderings, but a one to four hundred model, put it on the table and saying this is the new design. We had that done within two weeks. They they know that they can only get that from us and not from their other architects. 3D printing is going through the exact same process as computer drawing went through 20, 30 years ago. There's people who truly believe that this is the future and there are still people out there that really don't see the use for it. And if you look at how computer drawing evolves first hand drawing, uh, clients do not accept hand drawings anymore. Clients do not accept hand renderings. They only accept photorealistic renderings. And there will be a point where they will not accept anymore a model that doesn't have the detail level of the detail that we can provide them. The, the driver is not going to be the architect. The driver is going to be the client. What is it that the client wants? We uh, have the object either 350 we have the print for almost four years now. The learning curve for us was either very short or very long, depending on how we look at it. We are still learning. We're still doing new things with our, with our printer. But the first productive model, we actually had on the first week. It, it went over to the Netherlands and was used in a presentation. We were the only architect there with a 3D printed model. And it definitely got some people looking at us. Even though the technology is already high-end, object is still pushing to be better. And that's what how we see ourselves. We always push to be better. And it's just nice to surround yourself with people who think the same way. Okay. Um uh, uh, this is a nice video. Uh, uh, let's let's summarize uh, the main benefits uh, for a uh, writer architect. So, 3D printing enables the creation of models uh, of concept design in early stage of the process. Uh, 3D printing enables them to inter uh, to interact iterate iterate sorry um, at different design stages and more important at different scales. And 3D printing uh, enables the creation of uh, a digital part library that can be used in other projects as well. Um, so let's summarize the benefits of 3D printing, which uh, you know uh, uh, both team and uh, and the guy from Rightville uh, described today. Um, it's it's really to unlimited the uh, uh, design freedom, so we don't have any constraint to the design or the parts that we can make. It's the ease of the model creation. Um, as we saw in the beginning, we just have a file, we save it as an STL, we click print and we get the part. Sa save time by building the models. Uh, instead of, of, of doing it by hand, and you know, it might take an hour or, or days or weeks, it's a it's few hours and you have the model in your hand. Save money by building your models. We don't need expensive manpower or, 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 or complex uh, um, uh, materials. Also, we don't need lots of space. Uh, to make our models. Uh, more, more detailed and realistic models. We can go to very fine details that it's very tough to do by hand. Uh, speed up design decisions by having those models. Once we show it to customers, we show it to uh, colleagues in our office, we can speed up the decision. Uh, much better communication with our customers. Eliminate the guessing work. Um, you know, we don't need to guess stuff. We can see stuff. We can feel it. Um, as we said, a picture is better than a thousand words and uh, a part is better than a thousand pictures. Um, it's, it's confidential. We, we, can, we can keep it on-house. We don't have to outsource it. Uh, um, we can keep all our design in-house. Uh, it's a hands-free solution. It's a free, e e expensive manpower and, of course, the wow factor. 
Last slide that I have is about uh, a new offering that uh, Javelin uh, offers. Uh, um, we uh, we understand that not everyone out there uh, using 3D printing today, and not everyone out there know how to design for 3D printing. And when we say design for 3D printing, it's just about how to get uh, how to get the right design out of your uh, a run by out of your design. Um, so we came up with, with one day training um, that will include uh, introduction uh, for, for 3D printing, um, a, a lots of uh, 3D printing uh, best practices for architects. Also, it will include a hands-on uh, uh, 3D printing if, uh, part on our uh, printers that we have in our uh, offices. Um, and, and in the end of this day, um, you'll be able not only to work better with your own printer, but also to work with um, other service bureaus uh, uh, out there. Um, in that, I would like to thank you for joining us today. Um, um, if you have any more questions or any more information you need about 3D printing, please feel free to contact us, both my, myself, uh, I have my email here, uh, and also Tim Williams will be glad um, to, to help as well. Uh, uh, with any questions or uh, information you might need. Uh, I guess now, you know, we can take a couple of minutes to um, um, take some questions. If you have any question about the presentation, please feel free to uh, shoot it at the, at the chat uh, section uh, in the webinar. Um, and uh, we'll maybe wait one, two minutes for that. Uh, and if we have no questions, um, you can just shoot us emails later on uh, and we'll be glad to answer any question you might have um, and, 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 and provide any information.